Hey everybody and welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is going to focus on using Excel to run a hypothesis test, specifically a z-test. And the specific question we're going to look at is we're going to use female data. We're going to look at the height variable in our female data. We're going to create a null and alternative hypothesis to test whether the mean height of our sample female height data is actually statistically significantly greater than a known population mean of 63 inches. So there are several steps to run a hypothesis test and we can use Excel to run through each one of these steps. First, we're assuming that our population mean height for females is 63 inches and that's being given to us in the problem. What we're looking to test to see is is our data set of female heights that we've collected, is it statistically significantly greater than the known population mean of 63 inches? So our first step is to turn this hypothesis question into a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. So in this case, our null hypothesis will state that our sample mean of our height data for females is equal to the population mean of 63 inches that was given to us. In other words, our null hypothesis always tells us that there's no statistically significant difference between the data in our sample and the known population. The alternative hypothesis is that there is in fact a statistically significant difference and in this case, we're wondering if our females are taller. So we're going to see if our sample mean of our height data for females is actually statistically greater than the population mean of 63 inches. So here's our null hypothesis. Here's our alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis always represents that there's no statistically significant difference. The alternative hypothesis is generally what you're looking to show or test or determine. In this case, we're wondering if our sample of female heights is actually statistically larger than the known population. Maybe we just have a very tall group of women and we're wondering if that's true. In the second step, we want to choose an alpha value and we're going to use alpha as 0 0.05 and we're going to run a z-test in Excel. Our sample size is 40 and so we feel confident that running a z-test is a good idea because we have a large sample size and we also suspect that our data does come from a normal distribution. So let's go into Excel and see how to run a z-test for this data for female heights. So here we are in our data set. And here's the variable height that we're going to be looking at. We've got 40 different female heights listed here. Now let's find first where this statistical function lives. Let's say you're just in the home area of Excel and it looks like this. Your first step is to come across the top of Excel until you find the option called formulas. Once you choose formulas, you want to come all the way to the right until you see more functions. Select more functions and then choose statistical. Well, we're looking for the z-test here. So let's scroll all the way down because these are alphabetized until we see our z-test option. All right, this is what we want to use. But before we click anything, we have to decide where we want the result to go. So let me shut this down by clicking up top in a safe area. I'm going to scroll down below our data set to the bottom here. And we definitely want to have this under female height, so let's make sure we remember where that is. That's our second column. Okay. And I'm going to choose an empty slot, and that's where I'm going to have Excel calculate the z-test for me. So again, formulas, more functions, statistical, and then we'll find our z-test right at the bottom. When we choose the z-test, Excel asks us for some different things. The array is all the data that we want to use to calculate the z-test. Well, we want to use all 40 of our data points. And the easiest way to do this is to use your mouse to enclose the data. And this will tell Excel what data to use. So I'm going to come over here with my mouse to the very end of the data set. I'm going to press my left mouse button down and hold it. That encircles the data. And then I'm going to drag my mouse until it encompasses all the data. 
And I'm going to go all the way to the top until I've got the entire data set inside this nice dotted line. Then I'm going to release my mouse button. And that told Excel, use all the data in this range. All right, well, the next thing that we're looking for here, X is the value that we want to test. What does that mean? That means, what are we testing against? We're running a z-test here. We want to see if our sample data is different from a known population value. Well, known value is 63 inches. That was given to us in the question. So that's the value that we're testing against. The final question that Excel wants to know is, what's your sigma value here? In other words, what is the population standard deviation? Well, we don't have that data, and that's not un uncommon. And it says, if omitted, in other words, if you don't put it in here, the sample standard deviation will just be used and calculated. In other words, Excel will go ahead and calculate the standard deviation for you using your data. Well, that's what we want, so that's excellent. Let's go ahead and click OK, and then see what we end up with. OK, in this case, we end up with 0.32639. That's our z-test value. So let's hang on to that value. 0.323 is what, I'm sorry, 0.33 is what we'll round it up to. So we've run our z-test, and we've gotten a z-test value of 0.33. Okay. Our next step is to determine the critical values for our one-tailed hypothesis test with alpha is 0.05. And most textbooks and several internet websites, and there's a lot of different ways to get this, this piece of information that I'm going to give you, but the critical value for a one-tailed, right-tailed z-test is 1.645. This is our critical value using alpha is 0.05. So we've got our critical value already. That means that the very last step of our test is to determine what the result is. Our z-test value is 0.33. Our critical value is 1.645. Here's how you determine the result of a z-test. If your z-test result from Excel is greater than your critical value of 1.645, you're actually in a significant area and you can reject your null hypothesis and conclude that there is a statistically significant difference. However, that's not what happened here. Our z-test value is not larger than our critical value. In fact, our z-test result is actually less than our critical value, quite a bit less than. And so that allows us to determine that we cannot reject the null. Well, what was our null hypothesis? Our null was that the sample mean of our height data is not statistically different than the population mean of 63 inches. So the final result of this z-test is that our sample heights for our females is not statistically different than the known population height of 63 inches. We do not have a statistically significant difference. We cannot reject HO. All right, that's how you run a z-test hypothesis test in Excel. Thanks for joining me.